This is Peter Dysa. And if you like trans fats, you'll love Nostalgic Future Podcast. We are calling this Nostalgic Obsession. So whenever we have a guest on, not only do we want to know what what your career, your life, all your work and all that stuff. But but like we all have these shared things in our lives. Like Joe and I, in a, in a, in a recent episode, uh, we were like reminiscing on d- what we call Disney Afternoon, what was called Disney Afternoon. So like watching mm-hmm. DuckTales as a kid and like just these weird connections. I mean, Joe and I are the same age. I think, you know, I'm 40, Joe's 41. So we're all kind of like in the same era here. I'm 40, so, yeah. Yeah, you're 40. So So we kind of like we grew up at the same time. Uh, we did, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but just before I forget, I, I yeah. listened. I listened to um, your origin stories uh, uh, episode, oh. <laughs> and half of the half of the first Batman one. I'm I'm excited to finish it. I haven't I didn't have the time to finish it yet. But um, <laughs> the first CD I ever bought was Billy Joel's River of Dreams. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> there you go. Oh my, that just warms my heart. Okay. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. No, what? and I, I watched that too. The DuckTales, the uh, uh, Darkwing Duck, all that. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's funny. Batman. I had the, the Batman, uh, the cereal, the bank. There you go. Oh, d- did you? Bank. All right. Yep. I had it. Racks. They had a racks in Olympia. Olympia. Oh, you had a racks? <laughs> yeah. Which I, uh, I completely forgot about. Like it was erased from my memory until. Like, it was like last week I saw something some mention of it like on Twitter or something <clears throat> and it brought it all back yeah and then I and then I heard you guys talking about that so sorry to interrupt I just wanted to say that we, we have so, those connections too well you know just like you and Bob Odenkirk what, what did you call it like a soul connection like we, we have a soul connection now yeah <laughs> soul gaze <laughs> soul gaze <laughs> soul gaze there you go <laughs> okay let's pause and have it no okay so here's our here's our here's our first question yeah. What's a beloved pop culture obsession from your youth that you will always love and is still popular today? And uh, if so, what factors do you think have contributed to its longevity? If not, this could be go either way. What's something you're afraid might someday be forgotten? This is heavy business. <laughs> <laughs> We're very deep. <clears throat> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because, because, um, uh, Joe, you were kind enough to sort of give me a heads up on what sort of questions might be asked like this. And, uh, and then I started writing down like all, all these things that I loved when I was, when I was young, all the, uh, all the fads, all the, you know, all the big toys or movies or games or, or shows. And it just got me thinking about like, you know, just nostalgia itself and, and, and how, how, how nostalgia is less about the product or the piece of media and more about the feeling that that evokes in us or evoked in us when we were when we were little right so like these shows like like gi joe or or transformers or or he-man i was a big one i had all the he-man figures Same. right it's like it's like those, you are, heathens. those are I, I i grew up in a christian family we were not allowed that kind of demonic stuff in my in my youth, oh, so it's, I, it's it's funny to hear about He-Man. It's like, whoa, whoa. Sorry, <laughs> I know it's weird, right? <laughs> I grew up Protestant. They didn't really care. Well, I was Protestant. Yeah, whatever. It's funny. <laughs> well, in the Northwest, anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> but 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 those, you know those things were they're cool, but like eh, objectively, they're not that great. The stories are not that great. They're, they're pretty they're pretty cruddy things. But but they take us back to that time. They take me back to that time. When I when I had the GI Joes or the the He Man uh, figures and and I would play with them and it would open up just these realms of imagination and it was just this feeling of like I can do anything I can be anything I can create anything with this and it's, it's that that euphoria that I sort of that I'm nostalgic for so when something comes back <clears throat> you know when when they just take that product or that that piece of media and they just bring that back. I don't want to get into specifics to, to upset anybody, but like, um, pardon me, <clears throat> frog in my throat, um, yeah, like Transformers or something. It's like, it's okay. It's, it's great. It's fun, but it's not, that, that's not the thing that we loved. The thing that we loved was the, the, the time, the, the feeling around it. And I'm speaking for myself, you know, your mileage may vary, but um, in my, for my experience, it, it was not necessarily Optimus Prime. It was 
having Optimus Prime uh, out in the woods, like on a tree, fighting, you know, Decepticons way down here, you know, and, and creating this whole battle in my imagination. So it's like, so it's hard to, to bring those things back um, if, if they aren't already, you know, something that, that, that you know, objectively it, it stands on its own and of, of quality. Um, anyway, that got me down that, that rabbit hole of thinking and I, I'm still trying to work out um, my ideas about that. But anyway, yeah, the big things for me, um, I loved Batman. Yeah, I still love Batman. That was a big thing for me. I, I'm on the wrong episode. You sh I should have been on that the episode about Batman. Oh man, when Tim Burton's uh, Batman came out, that was incredible. And I watched the Adam West too. I loved it. We used to watch it uh, after school every day or in the summer, like all day long. Um, gosh, what else? I mean, all those all those cartoons, the 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 Darkwing Duck and the the Ducktales and the Tailspin and the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, you know Thunder Thundercats. Remember Thundercats? Yeah. Introducing the evil mutant warriors, Rattaro, Vulture Man, Groom the Destroyer, battle against Lion-O and the new Thundercat allies, Hatchet Man, Snowman, Tusco Warrior, the battle is on for the Sword of Omen. Thunder, 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 thunder. Figures and vehicles each sold separately from LJ. I had this, I had the sword. Um, yeah. You know, well, so was there anything, like, kind of to follow up what he was asking, has there been anything that you revisited and then you're just kind of like, it, it just didn't quite, you know, you, you know, you had these great, you know, fond memories, and then when you watch it, you're like, that really wasn't that great. Yeah, like everything. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Oh, it's hard. Because, uh, you know, I have a six-year-old now, so it's, it's sort of like, it's the time where I'm like, okay, I'm going to introduce you to some of this cool stuff from when I was a kid and then I watch, you know, and then, and then I realized that that stuff is like, you know, not very good or, or incredibly offensive or, you know, like, um, like movies. Oh man. Every movie in the eighties is, is just so hard to watch right now <laughs> these days. And, um, which is, it's just good. You know, people, people always say, you know, this, this movie didn't age very well or, or that movie you know all the all all the john hughes movies um you know they didn't age very well but i but what it is is you know i think it's the opposite of that i think we we did age well you know we we have um we have grown in our capacity for uh compassion and uh, being able to to walk in other people's shoes so so i i think it's a, i think it's a positive thing that being said i'm not going to show my daughter 16 candles or <laughs> well you know one of the weird phenomenon that chris and i have talked about a lot is just how many adult movies were marketed to kids in the 80s rambo tv show or car cartoon <laughs> i had action figures like what <laughs> I had police, yeah. police academy action figures. Like they were, that's so wild. Yeah, I was just thinking about that the other day. Like, what were they doing? Like Chuck Norris. I had Chuck Norris action figures, and at the time, you know, there, it was before. I think he had a cartoon later on. Chuck Norris, Karate Commandos. Bring it up, bring it down, fight for survival. Sold separately. Location to bet. Assignment recover stolen microchip. Protecting it was Super Ninja. Hey First, Chemo stood up to him hey and was downed. Then Reed Smith flew in hey and was grounded. But now it's his karate against mine. Hey Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Chuck Norris Super Ninja Reed Smith Chemo and other figures sold separately. New from Kenner. But it was even bef even before that. It was like action figures of him from like his <laughs> very adult action films yeah i remember i had um yeah robocop all the robocop cartoon um yeah that was uh, that was a crazy time they were just they were just trying to <laughs> make money any way they can and they did oh my gosh yeah all right next question next question <laughs> what's yeah. something 
from your parents' generation that you've learned to appreciate as an adult. Maybe you loved it as a kid, but, or maybe it's like you, you finally learned to love it as an adult. That's interesting because um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, what my, my parents, like what they were specifically into. Um, you know, certainly as I've, as I've grown older, I've, I've come to appreciate more television and film from, from the era. And this would have been, my dad was born in 48, my mom in 54. So this would be, you know, like 50s and early 60s era. <clears throat> So I, I've certainly grown to appreciate um, a lot of media from that. But mostly what I, what I think about is, is music. And um, I, I was not very independent minded growing up as far as, as that sort of thing. Like I didn't, I, I also wasn't really into grunge, you know, with, when Nirvana uh, was big in the early 90s. Because um, I, I never really had the option this is weird. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm terrible with memory also, but um, like whenever we're in the car, I remember, you know, we would always listen to the oldies station, uh, 97.3 KBSG, golden oldies. Um, Cause that's what the music my dad liked. There's only one Seattle radio station that makes you feel good all the time. One, two, three. Yeah. Oldies 97.3 KBSG. For fun and good times all the time, turn on Oldies 97.3, KBSG. So that's what I, from like day one, that's what I listened to. And that's what I enjoyed. And so I appreciated it already. Um, so I think m kind of the opposite of your question is, is more true. It's it's how, how, as I grew up, I learned to appreciate stuff from my generation. Because I was really, uh, I was really enmeshed in, in, and the stuff that, that my folks liked, you know, like listening to 50s and 60s uh, pop and rock, R&B. And then, um, you know, I was, I, was, I was late with my friends, like on fads or, or whatever was popular. It would always hit me like four or five years later. It's funny because I was just growing up, I'm under the impression that everybody in Washington just worshipped Nirvana. Yeah. No, they did. I, I remember. I remember uh, all the. I remember all the plaid, all the Kool Aid dyed hair, all the docks. You know, I remember it. And maybe it was. Maybe I was just. Maybe I wanted to be different. Maybe I didn't want to be with the cool kids. So you were rebelling. I think more more likely, I just wasn't very cool. So, <laughs> so was it listening to Billy Joel, you rebel. Yeah, like like in the eighth grade, like I had my favorite T-shirt was. Do you remember those? Uh, I won't say stupid. That's a bad. That's a that's a bad word. But um, do you remember those polar bears in the the Coca Cola commercials? Yeah. I had a T shirt that was the polar bears holding a Coca Cola bottle. That's that's what I like to wear in, in junior high. That was me with my River of Dreams CD <laughs> and my Coca polar bear T shirt. Yeah. Um, no, I was not traditionally cool or hip. I'm working on it. <laughs> Do you remember what your very first pop culture obsession was? Um, mm, it's hard. It's hard for me to remember that time. That was, I was really uh, kind of a whirlwind my, my, my formative years. Um, not to get all, all super personal, but my, my parents divorced when I was pretty young. And they each remarried a couple of times. And I remember, um, you know, I counted it once. I moved like 19 times over the course of like six years. So it was, it's hard for me to, to pinpoint moments in my past. Um, but I do remember, don't tell Chris, but I do remember being very uh, obsessed with He-Man um, and G.I. Joe and all those, all those action figures. It was like the heyday of action figures. So I would, I would always, uh, I would make my, make up my own stories. I never really had Transformers after that, after saying all that about Optimus Prime, I never really had Transformers. I don't know why all my friends did. Um, but yeah, I think it, it was, it was those two. And then it was X-Men, um, with the, 
uh, you know, I, I got my hands on some Chris Claremont issues in the mid late eighties, uh, dark Phoenix and all that jazz. Um, and then Batman, Batman, I think was the first big, big one. And it's the one that's lasted the longest, which makes sense because it's lasted the longest in the, you know, zeitgeist, I guess it's, it's, well, maybe not lasted the longest, but stayed the most popular, I guess. And it's just constantly being reinvented. Yeah. And you know what? That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I, confuse me. I don't care. Give me 20 Batmans. Did you see the new movie? movie? I did. And you know what? In the next, just make it dark, more dark. The next <laughs> one, just be, just be a horror film. And then just be like two hours of it's just a black screen. And then, and then we take a year or two off and then we can redo it and make it nice and bright and shiny and colorful and funny. That's great. There's just so much. Uh, there's so much opportunity to 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 switch up, you know, styles with Batman, as we've seen from Adam West to Robert Pattinson. So I, I like it. I love it. Wear it out. <laughs> okay, a couple more, and we'll, we'll we'll wrap up here. Yeah, yeah. Can you pinpoint something that maybe signaled your entrance into adulthood? Now, this could be something that you truly loved. Like for me. It's when I, I, start, I, I started to like Seinfeld. And I was like, that is not kid humor. And it was kind of me graduating to this, you know, to this next stage of my life. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa, something that just like everybody was loving and like you did not connect with. So like Joe and I, we've never gotten Power Rangers. And like that like, is, is a signal. If we had been five years earlier, we probably would have been all Power Rangers. Uh, so is there something like that for you? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um mm. First of all, I'm with you with Power Rangers. I just didn't, I never, I never, I never connected. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why. I mean, it was, it's a, it's a fun show. Um, but yeah, like it would be on TV and be like, no, never watch it. Um, I don't know, honestly. Like I want to say, this is kind of embarrassing, but I want to say it was like in like 97, 98. I was kind of like in high school, like maybe sophomore, junior-ish in high school. And I started watching like um, more adult oriented shows, mm -hmm. more like, uh, well, like, 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 like teenage drama shows like Dawson's Creek and all that. Um, I think that that got me, I, I, was, I was, you know, I was living in, in, in fantasy up until then, you know, uh, cartoons and, and sci-fi and action and all that. And then I, and then I started becoming invested in these characters that were living in the quote unquote real world. And I think that sort of signaled the change for me. And then that was also kind of the time when I started getting into theater. And so I, I, I just, I would watch, you know, really serious stuff, like really serious performances and heart-wrenching performances and, and just eating it up so on, actually honestly that might be it it might be when i when i started doing theater because then I, I started looking for for quality that's that's not the right word but i started i started looking for for more intense adult experiences in performance that's my answer i'll stick with that one all right last question if you were to take a guess what is a current cultural phenomenon that you think people will look back on and be nostalgic about years from now? That's a question that you gave me in advance and I did not think about. <laughs> the correct answer is better call Saul, right? I mean, that's the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh... <laughs> no, um, yeah, huh. I got a feeling just because everything works in cycles, you know, everything, everything, everything goes in waves. I have a feeling that, um, like Marvel, that like the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, eventually, maybe not, hopefully not, but eventually it might hit, hit a wall and, and sort of dwindle in, into, into, I don't think it'll ever disappear, but it might, you know, sort of go down different avenues, you know? I don't know what or why or when or how, but I feel like I feel like years from now, decades from now, maybe I will look back at sort of the abundance of these giant tentpole blockbusters, superhero movies, and wish that we had that again. It seems weird to say now because it's just like everyone talks about how 
you know, it's there's only superhero movies out there. And there's too many of them, and and all this. Uh, I love them personally, but you know, I understand the sentiment. But um, no, I, I think that there will become a time when uh, people will envy where we are right now with that. Maybe, I don't know. Hey man, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks um, for having me. This is great.